Hi, this is Mark from Sound Matters and welcome back to the channel. I've got another turntable review for you today. We're going to take a look at Riga's Planar 2, which is a sort of stepping stone model between the Planar 1, which is their very entry level affordable option, which I've reviewed before on this channel. I'll put a link in this top corner here if you missed that. And then on the other side of that, you've got the Planar 3, which is Riga's kind of multi award winning flagship affordable model, if you like. But this particular version of the Planar 2 that we're going to take a look at today has something slightly different about it. It's going to be an interesting review. Let's get straight into it. The current iteration of the Planar 2, which was released in 2016, came with many noticeable design improvements, but the version we're going to take a look at today comes with one very noticeable difference indeed, and it's the addition of one of Riga's new cartridges. It's the ND3, which is part of a range of new moving magnet cartridges that replace a lot of Riga's older models. Well, basically replaces the older models. Now available as a factory fitted upgrade, this should pique the interest of those who are perhaps looking for an upgrade on the very you know, humble but very capable Riga carbon cartridge that comes stock with the Riga Play R1 and Play R2. Now, I must say, for a cartridge that's so affordable, I've actually been really impressed with the sound of the Riga Carbon. But that said, there's a lot of debate online as to whether it's really, truly a competitive option to be pre-fitted on a turntable at this kind of level, particularly given that it's really based on the very, very cheap Audio-Technica 3600, or appears to be based on that model with its conical stylus. And if you look at the competition, you know, it's easy to see that most other turntables at this level are coming pre-fitted with cartridges that sport elliptical stylus something like the Autophon 2M Red or even their OM series. So I think it's easy to see why some consumers are kind of looking at that and thinking, well, a manufacturer like Riga that are really well known for very affordable but very low friction, well-designed, well-engineered tone arms and kind of thinking, does that really kind of do it justice? I can kind of see where people are coming from here. So with this in mind, let's take a closer look at Riga's new ND3 moving magnet cartridge. According to Riga, the ND3 is the first moving magnet to utilize a neodymium N55 magnet. As the world's most powerful commercially available magnet, this in theory provides the cartridge with more power than a standard bar magnet design. The use of a neodymium magnet borrows from moving coil cartridge designs, including Riga's own, and it is the use of this magnet that should potentially allow for a lower overall mass, meaning less inertia, and therefore a performance that closer resembles a moving coil design. This is an excellent concept, as moving coil designs are well known for their more open, dynamic and expressive sound. Now let's take a little recap on the Planar 2. As a significant upgrade to the Planar 1, the Planar 2 features a single piece tone arm with ultra low friction bearings. And as of 2020, Riga has also included an adjustable anti-scape or bias if you're based in the UK. The addition of this allows for greater flexibility and compatibility with a wide range of cartridges. Other key features include a 24 volt low noise, low vibration motor, a 10 millimeter thick floating glass platter, and a brass central bearing. Riga places great emphasis on creating friction-free low vibration bearings. In this incarnation of the central bearing, Riga claims the design offers an improved fit with less stress on the bearing, preventing the transfer of unwanted energy. The plinth is a very high gloss acrylic which is available in black, white, red and a walnut effect. Said plinth is supported by low surface contact feet offering solid vibration control but sadly there's no height adjustment for levelling the turntable. Underneath the plinth is a simple rocker switch for starting the motor. There's no speed control on the Planar 2 which means you'll have to move the drive belt manually by first lifting the platter to gain access. This is very common in many minimalist Riga and Project turntable designs. Just a little note about the turntable setup of this particular model. Now, for the most part, it's pretty easy, but I did find that the counterweight side of things was a little bit trickier. Now, you will have to do the conventional kind of balancing of the tone arm, set the tracking force using the counterweight. Now, I did find this a little bit more fiddly than some other models because there's no traditional kind of dial and numbers on the counterweight. So essentially, you balance the tone arm in the normal way that you usually would, and then Riga advises you in the instructions instruction manuals that a half turn of the so 180 degrees turn of the counterweight equals one gram of downforce but I didn't find that comfortable enough to sort of know that I was very close so I definitely would advise 
when you're setting this up to use a tracking force gauge to make sure that you've actually got the correct tracking force. Now, for some people who are absolute beginners, I can see this being a little bit fiddly and a little bit tricky. I would definitely advise getting yourself a tracking force gauge to help with this. If you don't already own one, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can pick one up. They're really cheap and they just make life a lot easier. We could do supply a cartridge alignment protractor so you can check your alignment of your cartridge straight out of the box. But because this is factory fitted, there really is no need to do that straight away. Also worthy of note at the same time though, is that if you're thinking of buying one of the new Riga cartridges as an upgrade and you happen to have a Riga turntable already, then alignment is really, really easy. They're designed in such a way that if you use Riga's three bolt installation system, then straight away the alignment will be spot on. I think that's pretty damn clever. Now, before we move on to the all important listening tests, let's consider some of the alternative models that you could buy for a similar price. Looking first of all at the Project Evo 2. Now the Project Evo 2 comes with a TPE damped aluminium platter, which I think is a significant downgrade on what you get with the Planar 2, which is a glass platter. I really like the Project Tone Arms, the, the carbon tone arms, very light, very rigid tone arms, but I really wish they'd move away from this fishing wire with a weight on the end of it for setting the anti skater um, I do, however, prefer Project's uh, counterweights with the traditional dial and the number system on them, and I also prefer the fact that Project don't use a moulded uh, phono cable output. They give you the option to be able to put your own phono um, photo cables into the back of the turntable. That said, both of these are absolutely superb turntables and they have a similar ethos about them, that the focus is really on the core components, the core bearings and the mechanics of playback instead of bells and whistles. Another model you could consider is the Fluence RT85. These are exceptional value, particularly if you're based in the US, as Riga and Project turntables can be relatively more expensive on that side of the pond, so to speak. They offer very, very good value for money in terms of the features you get and balancing that with the kind of you know lifestyle and sound quality all bled into one kind of experience whereas the Riga and Project turntables tend to be more on the min minimalist side and more purist when it comes to the mechanics of the operation so you know things like speed control things like uh, adjustable feet all those kind of elements that are generally considered I guess luxuries by Riga and Project it's a different ethos you know you're getting a very good rich feature set and they obviously have a very you know unique business model in that they're direct to consumer so that affects the price quite significantly but it is less purist when it comes to some of those core mechanics for example i own a fluence rt85 and if you take the the tone arm and give it a bit of a wiggle there is some play there in the bearing or in the you know mechanism of the tone arm overall and that's something that you just simply won't see in a Riga turntable. Now, which one is right for you will quite rightly depend on, I guess, you know, your personal preference and your priorities, what you're looking for from your turntable and your music listening experience. Another thing I did forget to mention is the detachable head shells. But of course, this all still plays into that purist mindset in that, you know, the rigidity, for example, of the tone arm. So having that detachable head shell, some purists would argue, takes away from that kind of rigidity and gives another point of contact where there's room for resonance. So depending on whether you're looking for the convenience of detachable head shells versus the purist mindset of those who would swear by a one-piece tone arm, this may affect your decision. And now it's on to the all-important listening test. How does the Planar 2 with the NU3 cartridge actually sound? Well, with this particular cartridge, I think it presents a very noticeable signature style of sounding spacious and open bringing a sense of air that I usually associate more with moving coil cartridges. Now, a lot of turntables at this price point come with something like, say, the Autophon 2M Red. And incidentally, I've recently captured quite a few recordings of the Autophon 2M Red for my Patreon account for AB gear shootouts. For comparison, I thought it would be interesting to pull up some of the records that I'd used for those samples and spin them using the Planar 2 to gain a sense of how the NU3 compared. I started with a copy of the Smith's The Queen Is Dead, and on the track, Big Mouth Strikes Again, the difference was night and day. The NU3 has impressive instrument separation with much wider soundstage than the 2M Red. 
tonally though, it's a little reserved in the mid-range, which some listeners may seek out, while others maybe not so much. The 2M Red has a reputation for having quite an accentuated upper mid-range, which becomes more apparent than ever when placing these two models side by side. Big Mouth Strikes Again is quite a transient heavy song, which really showcases the NU3's level footing and assured confidence. The Plane R2, equipped with the NU3, handles the jangly guitars and nimble hi-hat work with a natural ease. It's certainly a more reserved, less erratic rendition than I've heard from turntables fitted with the Autophon cartridges. Switching over to a copy of Nora Jones, Come Away With Me, which is a real test favourite of mine for bringing down the pace, and the Plane R2 presents a really open, airy quality in a really beautiful way with a tremendous sense of width. In this instance, with a degree of reserve comes more balance, as where some vocals on this album can produce sibilance, the Plane R2 with the NU3 glides through with ease, bringing only crisp clarity and breathy atmosphere. So it's conclusion time. What's the bottom line on the Plane R2? Well, I think it's an exceptional turntable that gets the mechanics right without breaking the bank. Those looking for lifestyle features like speed control, detachable head shells, you know, adjustable feet and all that kind of side of things may go wanting. But I think those who are more of a purist mindset will appreciate the emphasis on quality engineering and simplicity. The addition of the NU3 cartridge brings some welcome sound characteristics from the world of moving magnet cartridges, even if some listeners who appreciate a little bit more energy and zing in their sound may find it a little bit on the reserved side. Riga's Plane R2 with this ND3 cartridge certainly gets you a lot closer to that esteemed Plane R3 model, whilst also still representing exceptional build and sound quality. I think its exceptional footing and natural open sound are its vital qualities that make this a sophisticated choice that still stands out in an increasingly competitive market. So that's it from me and it's over to you. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments as always. If you'd like to support what I do here further, I'd appreciate you checking out the discount codes in the description of this video. You get money off vinyl gear at no extra cost to you and I get a very small commission to help support the channel. Thank you ever so much to those who continue to do so. There's also my Patreon account for exclusive content, including AB gear shootouts, so you can hear things for yourself. Thanks again to those who support over at that medium. But if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board my vinyl journey. But until that next video, please do keep enjoying the music, keep spinning, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.